Good morning, Ben Franklin Wizards. Mr. Wizner here. Happy Thursday, May 28th, 2020. I want to start off, Wizards, by saying how great it was to see everybody on that all-class Zoom today with Mr. Walters. Mr. Walter. Um, that was pretty neat. I th At one time, I saw 23 participants, so I'm pretty sure we were close to full class. Um, I hope you enjoyed the tour. I know it's not the tour you expected of Riverside, and hopefully you got to know Mr. Walter a little bit. Um, but um, ideally, we'd have you over at Riverside, and we would have taken a walking field trip over there, but that's not going to work this year. So um, I want to thank all of you. It was great seeing all of you. And in a couple weeks, we'll be doing a full class Zoom like that as we end the year, the last week. Uh, on June 9th, we'll do a full class Zoom, and on the 8th, we'll do the girls will Zoom, and then the boys will Zoom, and then um, on that Tuesday, we'll do a whole class Zoom, similar to what you did today. And then on the 10th, I'll see you all at school as you come to pick up your supplies. So that was really neat to see everybody uh, today. And Ms. Baker as well from Riverside. Another hot one today, Wizard. Another hot one out there. Hopefully you got outside, it looks like... Um, rain later in the day today coming so uh, get out there while you can hopefully it'll hold off been a couple hot days though great to see though get outside and enjoy it um we'll continue i'm zooming this week with uh students after this week i should have zoomed with almost everybody in the class so i'm excited about that um and i will read the robber after this today after we go through the slides for learning for today uh, for math uh, Dreambox, ABC, or two to three pages from the four problem solving packets. That's similar to what we've been doing. Uh, in reading today in nonfiction, uh, I know you've been to the San Diego Zoo already. Today in nonfiction, you're going to be going and taking a nonfiction tour of Egypt. All right, and you're going to learn a little bit about uh, the pyramids and mummies and what's a pharaoh. So watch those slides closely. Uh, the slides will explain it in detail more than I can here on video. Brain breaks, of course, as an option. Uh, for writing today, uh, we're going to do the time capsule writing again for coronavirus. Uh, and the focus today will be uh, what kind of family adventures you did during lockdown or quarantine. And if you can think of, is there any silver lining to what's happened with the virus? Silver lining is something positive that's come out of uh, the lockdown and the quarantine. For me, the silver lining would be our family. Um, our family has spent more time together uh, playing beanbags in the backyard, playing euchre, watching uh, movies. So the silver lining is, uh, since we've been all on lockdown, um, we spent more time as a family. And then what are some of the challenges of quarantine and homeschooling and lockdown? Uh, for us, it's who's going to be in the bathroom? <laughs> we got everybody crammed in now and uh, groceries and paying more for groceries more use of the bathroom, getting up at different times. So just having everybody home has changed the dynamics at home a little bit. I want to know about some of the challenges you have at home. Maybe you have more than four in your house like we do here. Uh, for word work today, unit three, week one, page two. Unit three, week one, page two. And spelling city lessons for today again. Um, again, red is a little bit easier and yellow is in the middle and then green is more challenging for spelling. Uh, you will see the specials links again that have been sent out. Probably another video from Mrs. Nordstrom. And then enrichment is always there as well. Um, I also will be including an email a code for uh, the Riverside Supply Kit pickup. Um, the school supply kits that your parents have purchased in the past at Ben Franklin. Now if you're going to Riverside, uh, there's a certain code that you're going to use there. So parents and students, please make sure you look in the email for that code that I supply for uh, the school supply kits for next year. Let's hope we start the school year in school with everybody and that you are using those supply kits. Okay, let's move on to the further adventures of the robber Hots and Pots. We left off with him ripping open that bottle. I shouldn't say ripping, slicing open the bottle with his sword. And if you remember, there was a um, note in there that said there is a buried treasure underneath the fire station but we know that Casper and Seppel put that note in there. Casper and Seppel were delighted with the way they had managed to trick Hots and Pots. 
They felt quite sure the message in the bottle had made him fall into their trap. That evening, they got grandmother to lock them up in the fire station. This was an essential part of their plan. That means very important part of the plan because the fire station could only be locked from the outside. Grandmother took away the key and wished them good luck. Now mind you don't miss, that man is capable of anything. If it wasn't such a good plan, I'd be really scared about the two of you. To tell the truth, grandmother was scared, though she did not show it. On her way home, she went to visit Mrs. Miller next door so as to keep her mind off Casper and Supple. Mrs. Miller gave her some tea and cakes, and then the two of the ladies began to gossip, sit down, and chat. Since they both talked at once, neither one of them got bored. The time simply flew past, and when Grandmother finally got up to leave, it was quite late. There was a light on in the living room of her house, and she found Chief Inspector Aloysius Dimplemolzer sitting on the sofa, wrapped in a bedspread. He did not seem like he was that happy. Here's a picture of him on Grandmother's sofa, dra uh, draped in a bedspread, and Grandmother coming in. What on earth have you been doing here, she said. What's this have to do with you? I could have been back on duty two hours ago if you'd come straight back from the fire station. Fire station. There, look at that. His uniform, freshly clean and pressed, was lying on the bureau of the sofa. That's like a dresser. So it all came back from the cleaners. The minute you'd gone, the doorbell rang, said Mr. Dimplemolzer, and there was a boy from the cleaners with a parcel under his arm. The boss's compliments, and since it was for me, they had worked overtime, so they delivered his uniform. Fancy that, said Grandmother. Isn't that wonderful? There, now see what can be done if you put a little pressure on people. What I don't understand is why you're still sitting around half-dressed in that bedspread. Aren't you going to put on your uniform that was just delivered? Mr. Dimplemoser looked at her. It's my buttons, he said, shrugging his shoulders. The cleaners accidentally cut them off. He pointed to a paper bag lying beside his uniform. I'd have sewn them on long ago if I knew where you keep your sewing items. Grandmother got out her needle case, her thimble, and a reel of strong black thread. Then she sewed Mr. Dimplemoser's buttons on his uniform. All 36 buttons. First on the trousers, and then on the coat, and then down the front, and on the pockets, and on the cuffs, and on the collars. It took some time. Grandmother didn't, didn't hold with doing a rush job. She wanted to make sure she'd do it the right way. I'm sewing them on as fast as I can, and as firmly as possible, she said. And much as I'd like to oblige you, I can't go any faster, she said. Finally, the 36th button was sewn into place. Mr. Mr. Dimple Moser heaved a sigh of relief. He got dressed, put on his helmet, and fastened his sword to his uniform. Grandmother, he said, twirling his mustache. You have no idea how grateful I am to you. At last I feel like a member of the human race again. Now I'm off to the fire station to fight for justice. As fast as I can go. Let's hope Casper and Seppel haven't bungled it up. Taking robbers is not child's play. He strode off. Outside the door he mounted his bicycle and was just about to ride away when Grandmother came running out of the house. Chief Inspector, Chief Inspector. Well, what is it? Can't you see I'm in a hurry? The key, Chief Inspector, the key, said Grandmother. The key to the fire station. Why didn't you say so before? Give it to me. Every second counts. Goodbye. Goodbye, Chief Inspector. Grandmother stood in the doorway until the red-black light of the bicycle had disappeared into the darkness. It really is a great comfort to know that he's on his way to help Casper and Seppel, she thought to herself. So... The chief inspector is on his way to the fire station, and Casper and Supple are there already, and they are hoping to trap the robber Hots and Plots with the message in the bottle that mentioned a hidden treasure buried underneath the fire station floor. And that's it for today, Wizards. Thursday, May 28th. Hopefully you get outside before the rain comes, and we will talk to you again on Friday. So long, everybody.